everyone. Welcome to episode three of my self-hosted Kubernetes with BPF series. Today we're going to be looking at doing the actual work. We're going to be uh, setting up the cluster of Firecracker virtual machines, and then we will be installing onto each of those virtual machines um, a Kubernetes cluster on them. So um, to keep myself honest, I'm going to do this on another server that I have at my house. Um, that machine is running Fedora 33. And uh, there's a few things that we need to do to our um, platonic image to make sure that the networking is going to work no matter where we, uh, where we run our virtual machines from. So let me show you how to make sure that the networking is going to work and, and specifically what's going to go wrong um, on different machines, depending on your host's DNS, is the DNS of the, um, the virtual machines might be incorrect. So let's fix that up on our platonic virtual machine, um, and we'll go from there. So uh, I need to get into my, to a new namespace again. So ns-u, and then I'm going to start up the regular Firecracker uh, server here. And in a different window, I am going to get into that network namespace. And I'm going to uh, run the, the, get the firecracker machine, the platonic firecracker machine running. So we'll give the username and password that we set up in the, uh, the last episode. And in this, what we want to do is we want to vim etsy systemd resolved, resolvedd.conf. And what we want to set in here is these two items. So I've already done this on this machine, but um, what you will find on the green machines or the machines that we were, that we set up last episode is something that will look like this. So we want to change this and, and use uh, DNS servers that we know will work for us. So let's set up for Cloudflare and our fallback will be Google. And then we make sure that we get rid of those. Okay, so that's all we have to do to ensure that our um, that DNS will work on these virtual machines if we move them to a different, different server somewhere. So um, that was pretty easy. Uh, let me get out of this network namespace. And I will shut this network namespace down. All right, we no longer have that network namespace running. So the next step that we want to do in order to transfer everything that we've previously done to another machine is let's let's um, compress this eight gigabyte file because shoving that over the network is going to take a really long time. Even, even over a home network, it's gonna take 10 minutes. So let's compress that up with XZ and just let that run for a little bit. All right, the compression has finished and we can see that it's compressed it right down to 772 megabytes large. So the next step that we're gonna do here is we're gonna copy this over to the server that we're gonna run this on. And I have a machine called TV, and we're going to put that in home, my username, code. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do here is we need to copy over the kernel that we compiled in um, episode one. So let's go into the kernel area, and you see that we have this uh, kernel.tar.gz. Now that contains everything that we actually need in order to run our Firecracker virtual machines. So we will secure copy that over to TV as well. And that's a much smaller file, so it's, it's there now. And now we're going to SSH into that machine. So, and we've got the kernel and we've got the compressed file system. So let's decompress the file system. 
And we will also decompress the kernel. So I'll open up another window. to start doing that. So. And we made a mistake here. We should have put this into a Linux area. So I'm gonna remove the lib and boot that we just got there and make dir Linux, move kernel into Linux. All right. And the last thing that we're going to do in this kernel is copy from boot VM Linux to the Linux directory and just call it VM Linux. So now in this directory, what we have, and we can get rid of this uh, boot and lib. All that we need here is the VM Linux and the kernel tar.gz. And the file system has now finished decompressing. Um, so we've got what we need, except we don't have the scripts to run this. Now, I've previously installed into my bin directory all my um, QEMU Firecracker scripts. Um, so they're all there. However, root user sometimes needs to get access to these so we need to change uh, something on the root user to ensure that we have access to these scripts um, the other thing that we could do is just copy these into to to slash bin but i don't want to do that so what i'm going to do is edit the sudoers file and what i'm going to do in the sudoers file is i'm going to make sure that that bin, bin directory from my masmullen area is inside of the secure path. So normally what you would find is this, and I'm just going to change it to that. Now, of course, we can't actually save to this file because it's, pa it's, um, it's not writable. It's not a writable file. So the first thing that we need to do is chmodit user plus write on Etsy sudoers. And then we will go ahead and make the change. Now I don't actually need to do anything here. So save and quit and make sure that we put take off the right flag from the, the file. Okay, so let's grab the Kubernetes, um, the Kubernetes script that I've got from GitHub. So the way in which we do that is just go into my GitHub area here, copy that into our clipboard and get clone it. Okay, so we've got everything that we need. Let's start up the uh, virtual machine cluster. So what we need to do here is get inside of our network namespace. And of course we need to know what the, 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 the physical card that we're going to use for transfer outside of the network and on this machine that I'm SSH into, I'm doing this over a wireless connection. So I'm going to copy in WLP3S0 into my clipboard, and then I will issue the change to the new network namespace. And I'm going to get in that on this second, um, second console here after I get into the VMs area. All right, we're both inside of this network namespace. And let's start up the, the Firecracker cluster. And we're going to be using the, uh, the script called fc-clust. So what we, the, the commands that we're going to do is we're gonna pass the root, um, the root file system, the kernel, 
we're going to say how many um, virtual machines we want to run. And then for each of those virtual machines, we'll say that they get uh, a certain amount of memory, and that's in um, gigabytes, and a certain amount of cores. So I'm going to fcclust, and then the root file system is that the root file system is that observe that we created in the last episode. The kernel is going to be the kernel that we just um, decompressed onto this hard drive at Linux, VM Linux. And we're going to say that we want to start five virtual machines. Each of them will have four gigabytes of RAM and they'll each have two cores. So we'll let this run. And give it a second to start up. All right, so while that's starting up, what we want to do is go into the kube Ansible directory that we've been talking about that we got from GitHub. And what we want to do here is we want to make sure what our IP address um, of the, the BRZ, the, the BR0 is. And it is 192.168.1. Dot something. The dot something doesn't matter. What we need to make sure of is the 192.168.1 here. And we're going to change this hosts file. This hosts file is what um, Ansible uses to understand what the different machines are all about. So you'll see what I'm talking about when I open it up. So we've got these three different types of machines. We've got one master machine. We've got one registry, which will host our Docker registry, um, our private Docker registry, and I'll talk about that in the next video. And we've got three worker nodes here. Um, now you'll notice that it's at one, uh, 168.2, not 168.1. So we need to change that. So let's uh, issue a change, 168.2. We're gonna change that to 168.1 globally. So we changed it um, for all cases in this file. Now, the next thing that we want to do is make sure that this kernel package is pointing to the kernel.tar.gz that we copied in. And this is actually wrong for this machine. So we're going to change that to just say the home directory code Linux. Um, to where it is. That's where it is on the hard drive. So we'll use tilde to say home. And we will save that. And now we will use Ansible to start up the Kubernetes cluster. So uh, just to see that host file one more time, uh, the master is going to be at 50, the registry is at 51, and the workers will be at 52 to 54. And the way we run the Ansible script is... Actually, I'll show you the script that we're going to be running. So the script that we're going to be running is a bunch of Kubernetes all dot gamma. And what this does is it's actually a script um, of a whole bunch of other scripts. So what this script will do is it will first update all of the virtual machines. It'll then change the names of all those virtual machines to equal master registry or nodes dash one, two, and three. Um, it will then install modules. So the modules come from the kernel.tar.gz that we copied onto um, this, this, uh, this server here. It will then set up the, um, the Docker machine and we'll talk about that in the next video. And it'll then go ahead and start installing uh, Kubernetes. So it's going to install, um, um, uh, it's, it, well, let's see what it does. Uh, cat distro agnostic, um, install cub. No, actually, it's a cat Ubuntu, install kates. So what it's going to do is it's going to install these three utilities, uh, kubelet, kubeadmin, and cube control. So kubelet is how uh, the machines will talk to each other. Uh, kubeadmin is how we start up um, 
start up Kubernetes so that the, the master kind of broadcasts, I'm a master, and then the nodes join it. And then kube control is how we issue commands and issue deployments. We're also going to be using container D and we're going to be getting container D from, um, from a site online rather than, um, rather than what the, the distro installs for you by default. So, um, yeah, if you want to go through this line by line, you can check that out. But, uh, the important thing in here is that we're installing these three, um, these three utilities um, for Kubernetes, and we're using container D as our um, container runtime. Uh, so the, the next thing that happens is that we're going to install Cilium as our um, network, uh, network plugin. We're gonna join all of the nodes to uh, the master repository. We're going to install Istio as a service mesh, and then we're going to install Metal uh, LB as our load balancer. And you can go into each one of these and see what's going on. Um, everything here is on, on GitHub. Um, and if it's not on my GitHub, my GitHub refers to um, open source GitHubs um, run by either Cilium or Istio or Metal. Um, we're not going to be installing Nginx, but if you wanted to take, uh, uncomment this away, we could get our Kubernetes cluster running with Nginx. Um, but we want to be running our, um, our BTF exec VE scraper instead of Nginx. And uh, Nginx will get in the way of MetalDB uh, because MetalDB isn't as fully featured as the load balancers that you get from AWS or uh, Amazon, uh, um, Amazon uh, AWS or Microsoft Azure or uh, Google Kubernetes engines. So uh, saying all this, everything should be easy here. All that we need to do is run a Ansible playbook, Ubuntu, Kubernetes all, and we're going to pass in a dash capital K, lower K. And those two Ks are to say, um, uh, what our passwords are on side of these these machines so we're going to run that and then give the passwords and let it run Okay, so everything has been installed. Let's get into the um, the master node and see what's going on with our cluster. So I'm going to SSH into it uh, as user at 192.168.0.50. No, it's not zero, it's 1.50. All right, so let's do a cube control get pods all namespaces and let me zoom out this window just a little bit more and we can see that we've got our um our machines up and running everything looks to be good um but of course there's there's nothing actually being done on this this cluster right now so in the next episode um I'm going to assume that I'm starting from this point. However, um, for the rest of this episode, I'm going to sh show you uh, installing Nginx on these machines. Um, so I'm going to get out of the master and inside of distro agnostic, there is an Nginx YAML file that we can use here. So I'm going to do an Ansible playbook. And that's distro agnostic nginx. And again, I'm going to put the capital K lower K to indicate that I would like to use my password. So we'll put those on. And the web server has been installed uh, back into the master node. And we'll watch them starting up. 
and it looks like they have all started up. Let's check one more time here. Yes, they've all started up and they're running. So get out of that master node again. And I'm also going to get out of this network namespace now. So I'm now in the normal namespace with my regular, I'm in the default network namespace on the server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a graphical um, browser and I'm going to go to HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.1.240. Okay, maybe I'm just going to double you get HTTP colon 192.168.1.240. And we'll, we will spit this out to the standard out. So you can see we've got the Nginx up and running here. We've got the Nginx website up and running. Let me try that links one more time. I want to go to http colon slash slash 192.168.1.240. wonder why they say I need an upgrade. Anyways, um, I guess links doesn't work because reasons whatever um we've got the we've got the the website up and running um now we're not going to be able to get to the website from our um development machine here because we have no route from our development a development machine here into uh 192.168.1 anything that network doesn't exist to us um so yeah i will see you in the next episode where i will talk about deploying the um the BTF exec VE scraper instead of the Nginx. So see you soon.